Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here to do my comic book reviews for comics that came out on August 24th. First of all, only one Marvel. FF, number 8. Alright, Mr. Fantastic, Spider-Man, Nathaniel Richards, and Doctor Doom have taken the supervillains that they've invited and have decided to lead them to lead them to the battle between the Inhumans and the other Reed Richardses. And before I continue, I want to kind of refer to our the main good Reed here as Mr. Fantastic and the other guy, other versions I'll just refer to as Reed Richards. So anyways, during the fight, Mr. Fantastic, they all go to the Fanta to the Forever City which was created by the High Evolutionary to sort of experiment on and Mr. F and during the huge fight, the villains pretty much scatter pretty much break off into teams, and while they're, this is going on, Nathaniel R Richards and Mr. Fantastic notice uh, something significant about one of the reads. They say that, wait, this could mean something different, and right when Mr. Fantastic is talking, Medusa and Lockjaw appear. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Medusa is Black, Bolt's, is Black Bolt's wife and the Queen of the Inhumans, and Lockjaw is, well, this huge kind of bulldog that they that the inhuman royal family has that can teleport across space and stuff. And Medusa says that Mr. Fantastic has been summoned and she takes him ba back to the main inhuman courtroom and stuff. And the issue concludes with Doctor Doom finding one of the alternate reads and he wishes and he's getting ready to interrogate the guy and ask how the weapons work. But right when Doom's about to do this, he gets attacked from behind by Diablo and the Mad Thinker. So that's a nice little twist. And that's where the story ends. Alright, FF number 8. It has been a while since we've got stuck with the main story because the last two issues have dealt with Black Bolt coming back and stuff. Now we're back in the main story. The supervillains have... Mr. Fantastic has decided to take action. He's leading the supervillains to the Forever City so that he can finally confront the Reeds and t stop, stop them from trying to take over the world, world or destroying the planet. And yeah, that's all I have to say about FF. If you've been following this comic, then you should get this issue. Then you should get... This is definitely the time to... Jump back onto FF if you skipped the last two issues just because you didn't like want to hear about Black Bolt or the Creed and stuff, and you just want to stick to the main storyline about the big war going on between the four four cities. And yeah, so yeah, FF. If you've been read, reading it, then I'd say pick it up. But if not, then you should wait for the trade. Okay, next up. Now for DC, Young Justice, number seven. This is based off the TV series, and this issue, it's basically a background for the TV show's character, Artemis. Uh, Artemis was pretty much sort of a... I think she's an original character created by Young Justice. I know there's another character named Artemis in the main DC universe, but she's an Amazon and an ally to Wonder Woman. This Artemis has no relation to her, and it does give you a little more background to this character cuz when she appears on on the Young Justice TV show uh at first she it said that she's Green Arrow's new sidekick and his niece but Speedy but Speedy or Red Arrow now finds uh, finds out that she's not Green Arrow's niece and apparently ba whatever Batman and Green Arrow have planned there's probably good reason behind it and we basically have no idea who we some hints are dropped about Artemis's identity throughout the series, and this is just kind of like another little background issue for her. And it takes place during the episode where the team fights Amazo, and it's when Ar when they fir and when Artemis shows up. Well, she doesn't really show up in that episode. She just kind of helps out by firing an arrow, arrow to help kind of help Superboy and the team along and stuff. But this is just. A background information for the character Artemis. If you're watching the TV show and you want to know more about Artemis, this can kind of help you out a bit. Next up. Flashpoint number three. Hal Jordan. Flashpoint Hal Jordan number three. Alright. Hal Jordan. This series. 
Um, it's been kind of an average thing for me. I mean, it's good, but it's not really something that I find very interesting. It's Hal Jordan's life if he never got the ring. Again, Abensor's alive, so Hal Jordan's never never became the Green Lantern, and he's still a test pilot. Now Hal is flying the Green Arrow nuke nuke into into the war between the Atlanteans and the New Amazons. And while and Hal is part of the fleet fleet of planes, and Carol is on there too. And when they arrive at New Themyscira, they discover the entire island sealed off by a force field. So Hal naturally and is well, it's surrounded by a force field, and Hal has to stop has to figure out a way in, so he figures the only way is to use the Green Arrow nuke. And during this time, though, they are attacked by Am Amazons, and Hal can't, and Hal's controls are locked, and he can't deton and he pretty much can't detonate his, the, can't launch the missile, so he has to fly his plane directly into the uh, force field to take it, to get to work. And of course, Carol said, Carol's plane's going down too, so they both decide. So she makes Hal promise to eject his seat, and Hal says that he agrees. But it do, but apparently it doesn't work for Hal because his controls are jammed. So he gets Carol to jump out of her plane to safety, and Hal, however, he's still in his plane, so he still takes the plane in. He uses the Green Arrow nuke and destroys the force field, allowing all the other reinforcements to come in and stop fighting the war and stuff. And the final two final pages in this are really heart wrenching. Are really good because Carol is going among is pretty much clean is going amongst some of Hal's things and she finds a little journal that he wrote and it pretty much says that he loved from Hal and he says that he loved Carol all along and that he and that he says he's sorry that he never admitted and then she finds a little box with a ring in it obviously meant for her. So it's. So this issue is kind of a downer. I mean, Hal Jordan dies. Granted, he dies heroically to sacrifice his life so that the, so that the Atlantean Amazon War could st could get closer to an end. And also, it's sad for Carol because the man she lo who loved her with who loved her is dead. I mean, it really is kind of a downer. <laughs> But uh, it's a good story, and if you've all ever been curious about what Hal Jordan would be like if he was never a Green Lantern, then you should definitely check this out. It doesn't really focus... Something I noticed about this series, though, is that it really doesn't folk, drive a lot of attention on the whole Amazon Atlantean War. It's kind of more on Hal Jordan just being a test pilot. Shows Hal can still be a hero even without the ring. So, yeah. If this is collected, then definitely pick it up if you're a Hal Jordan fan. And... It, and it might give you a little reassurance as to what kind of guy Hal might be now since he's no longer a Green Lantern. Alright. Flashpoint. Kid Flash lost. The story... Alright, Kid Flash is now being... Last issue, Kid Flash got his connection to the Speed Force back. So, but now he's starting to become the new Black Flash. And he's going back to different points in time near near Max Mercury, Jay Garrick, Wally West in the Flashpoint universe, and he's just kind of like seeing them and collecting speed, residual speed force energy. And Kid's trying to figure out what's... And then Kid Flash is get stuck in the speed force again, and he finally realizes what he's supposed to do with this new energy, and that he notices Barry as the Flash running in the speed force, so Kid Flash finally figures it out, and he gives... And he pretty much uses the remaining energy to pass it on to Barry. But that kills Bart. <clears throat> Sorry. Bart pretty much gave his life so that Barry could have an, get, have an extra energy boost so that he could figure... So that he can still use his, use his connection to the Speed Force to try to change history and stuff. Stuff to get the DC Universe back to the way it... Was technically. Um, Kid Flash Lost. Um, it's a good main series. It focuses on Bart Allen. It shows how he's how Bart's kind of matured over the years, and that now Bart made the heroic sacrifice to help his grandfather save the world. Okay, here's a good one. Project Superman number three. 
All right. It's revealed that this guy, Project Zero, is free from the Phantom Zone after being stuck in there for 20 years dur during the attack when Batman, Flash, and Cyborg tried to free Superman, or Cal, I guess. <sighs> so once he's... This issue pretty much takes sort of takes place after Flashpoint number three, after the failed attempt to free Superman. Cal flies to Europe and he saves Lois from b being held hostage by Amazon Amazon soldiers. And then all of a sudden, Project Zero shows up to kill Cal and sort of take his place, and sort of then claim to take kind of take over the world with the illusion that he's doing it for the greater good, but. Superman, but Cal is able to fight, is able to fight, hold his own against Soldier Zero, and then somehow Soldier Zero has the ability to absorb uh, alien DNA and stuff. And right before Soldier Zero left the compound, he absorbed DNA from Doomsday. And even in his little skinny state, Cal still beat beat Project Zero, and well, he killed him. I and absorbed some of his power too, apparently. But during the crossfire, though, Lois Lane is killed. And Lois's death and the defeat of Soldier Zero finally pushes Cal to realize that he's meant to become Superman and save the world. So, nice little conclusion there. Um, yeah, that's what happened. Cal, this universe, the Flashpoint, Cal L finally realizes that he's meant to do great things, and he, with the defeat of Soldier Zero, he finally does that, and he realizes that he's important, and that he can save the world, and he's Superman. Alright. Now back to the main DC Universe. Action Comics 904, the final issue of the first volume of Action Comics. But they're probably gonna, because in about two weeks, they're gonna re-release this as Action Comics number one. They'll probably just, I give about eight years when it Gets close to the thousandth issue, they'll probably go back to the original numbering. Okay. <clears throat> the conclusion to the Reign of the Doomsday story arc. Uh, Superman was apparently trapped in the ship's computer, and he learns that the ship is alive, and the ship pretty much frees Superman, and tells him how he can sort of delay the detonation, sort of stop the detonation and destroy the ship that is controlled by Doomslayer. And Superman is able to do so with the help also of the Eradicator who's possessing Doomsday's body. And they're able to take out Doomslayer. And when it when the clock gets closer, the ship will be, be sealed forever and it will be destroyed. And of course Superboy and Supergirl and Steel have defeated the other Doomsday clones. And they throw them into the ship so that they'll be trapped in there. And right when the Iraq and the Eradicator throws... And when Superman says that he'll stay behind to help the Eradicator stop Doomslayer... Eradicator says that he Superman is needed in the world and that he needs to help protect it. So he throws Superman out of the ship just in time for Supergirl to get him out of there, and the ship is destroyed. So yeah, Superman is able to defeat was able to defeat Doomslayer at defeat Doomslayer and save the day. And the issue do, ends with a chat between Lois and Clark. Clark having dinner, and Clark kind of focuses on how people are how people have tried to live by his example and how, like the Eradicator, they, they're they destroyed, but Lois and Clark is not so sure if he wants other people following his example as a member of the super... Well, he wants people to do good, but just not really like the Eradicator as part of like the Superman family and stuff. He's worried about that because he's worried that people might get killed, but Lois reminds him that it's because he cares that makes them want to follow him because he's still a good guy with all his powers and that it's his great example that makes others want to do good too. I mean, that's the gist of how Lois and Clark have the conversation. It's really nice when you read it in the comic and stuff and it was a nice send-off final issue for Action Comics. I mean, the ending with Lois and Clark was probably my favorite part of this issue. Just the conversation, the dialogue between the two, it's very concluding and also very sad because you know they're not going to be together at the new DC Universe, but they can find a way back to each other. I mean, Lois and Clark have been through worse stuff and they've always managed to come back together. So yeah, hopefully in the new DC Universe, 
Lois and Clark can start dating again soon. Alright, another final issue. Teen Titans, number 100. At least this series actually made to 100 issues before it was cancelled. Bravo. Alright. The Teen Titans have managed to defeat, con defeat Superboy Prime's flunkies and the Connor clones. Spe especially in part to the kryptonite to what Connor kept in his lead box. A couple of issues ago, Cassie returned a box to Connor after they broke up. And Cassie says that she felt that Connor should give this to someone else now. And apparently what was in the box was actually a kryptonite spike. And which Superboy told Ravager to get so that they could use it to kill the Connor clones. And also the, teen the rest of the Titans are able to easily take out the other members of Superboy Prime's Legion of Doom. Uh, Raven locked head case in alternate universe. Uh, Kid Flash, wait, alternate dimension. Kid Flash was almost killed in inertia, but Raven held him, got him to control his anger, and everyone else just kicked ass. And Wonder Woman, Wonder Girl fought uh, Superboy Prime for most of the issues, though, and he kind of taunted her about the Titans who died under her care, but every single Titan after they defeated Prime's little Legion of Doom. Every single Titan got their chance to hit Prime, and that's what knocked him out. It was the continued force of every single Titan that was there, continually punching on Prime, and they were able to knock him out. And now Superboy Prime has finally... And Superboy realizes that they need to keep, keep Prime out of harm's way, but lock him up in a way from somewhere he can never get. So he and Supergirl take, take Prime, and they lock him in the Source Wall, which is this... Huge wall at the end of the universe that somehow keep somehow locks locks keeps evil beings in a frozen pantry of state or something. Uh, I remember Superman tried to lock Darkseid in there, but Darkseid got out. So they Superboy decides to keep Prime in the Source Wall for all eternity, I guess, at the end of the universe. Okay. This is the 100th issue. It is very this conclu this is definitely a great conclusion for the Titans. It's all of them come together to unite under a common threat. They're able to defeat that threat and save the day. Also, a nice little sort of character development for Connor when it's revealed that he's still troubled by when he was controlled by Luthor, and that's the reason he keeps the kryptonite w around him just so that in case he ever goes rogue someone can be there to take take care of him. And he gives the box to Ravager at the end of the story, which is kind of good since Rav out of all these guys, Ravager does have the killer instinct. And the way Connor keeps Kryptonite does remind me of how Superman gave Batman the Kryptonite ring just in case he ever went rogue. And, and I find it weird that, I don't know, Connor didn't give it to Tim, because, I mean, hey... Like fathers, like sons. Come on. But still, the I thought it was it may have been a good choice to give to Ravager because I mean she actually does have sort of the guts to do it in case it needs to be done. And since this is the 100th issue, it is five dollars, but it's worth it. Okay, you also get a ton of great great pictures of Titans drawn by various artists, and it's amazing. I would definitely recommend. Picking this up if you're a Teen Titans fan, especially if you're a fan of these Titans, okay? I mean, there have been a number of incarnations of the Teen Titans ever since they first appeared, but I'd say that uh, Superboy, Red Robin, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, they're my Titans, okay? These are the Titans I love, they're my Titans, and I am really glad they're still going to be together after the relaunch, granted not the versions, but... Still, will be the four Young Justice characters in the uh, New Teen Titans series. I mean, it may not be the same, but at least they're together. <sighs> really sad to see this series go, but at least, you know, at least the f four, at least my Titans will still be together after the relaunch. Okay, so, in conclusion, Teen Titans number 100. Very amazing. If you've loved this team, pick it up, and all... And if you're not, if not though, there is still some good, there's still some good art, uh, other Titans posters drawn by other artists that I would say is good, but it's not worth 
paying five bucks if you don't want to read the story. And Action Comics 904. Um, I th think it was an interesting fight between Dooms between Superman and the Eradicator versus Doomslayer, especially because the Eradicator was in possession of Doomsday's body. So it was kind of weird seeing Superman and Doomsday team up to fight someone. And, and again, a great conversation between Lois and Clark at the end of this, which is definitely worth worth this issue. Project Superman number three. Very amazing conclusion to a great miniseries. Probably one of my favorites of the probably my second favorite of the flat of uh, the Flashpoint tie-ins. My first being Batman Night of Vengeance. Kid Flash Lost, number three. Um woo. Okay, my overall opinion of this, it's very good. It does, if you're a Bart Allen fan, then definitely pick this up, because in the end it kind of shows how Bart's matured a bit. And also he is given re he does witness a scene in Barry's past where Barry's having a conversation about with Iris and Barry says that he wants to, you know, kinda of team up with Bart, but he's a little worried that Bart that he doesn't but it's because he doesn't really know Bart because they're still from two different worlds. But Barry still cares about his grandson. Hal Jordan number three. Um she gives you a taste of what Hal Jordan's life would be like without the Green Lantern ring and it proves that Hal Jordan does not need a ring to be a hero. Young Justice number seven. If you're a fan of the TV series and you like the character Artemis and you want to know more about her, this issue is for you. And FF number eight. We return to the main storyline after two issues of Black Bolt filler and Doctor Doom is stabbed in the back. All right. Those and comic of the week, I would definitely have to say is Teen Titans number 100. This is definitely an amazing issue. I loved it. And that is my review for this week. Oh, and yeah, I didn't open the books. That is because I am I'm starting to realize that I do not want to get have my videos taken down in case the images in these books are copyrighted. So I'm probably going to stop doing the page by page reviews. And I may, and within the next few weeks, I'm going to probably start bagging my comics like with Teen Titans number 100 and Action 904. So that's the end of my review. Spider-Man 1991 saying see you later.